So as most of you know, this year, 2017, is a somewhat important year for us as Lutherans, as it marks the 500th anniversary of the birth of the church, what we know as the Lutheran Reformation that took place so long ago. And as we move into the fall, this will become a theme that's more prominent and more publicized for us, not only in our Lutheran circles, but really at the world at large, because it was an event that did change the world at large. And it's not that we want to get bogged down in history and spend so much time looking at the past that we lose sight of where we are today. But I think there's often a benefit in looking at the past and seeing where we've been because it can help us move forward and look towards the future. And I think that there's a lot in our history and what started 500 years ago that helps us to understand what Jesus was talking about in the gospel lesson today when he told the parable of the seed sower. In our sophisticated world today that is filled with all sorts of technology and electronics, I think it's hard for us to imagine a time when words were not readily available to everyone. But that's exactly the context of the world that surrounded the people of God at the time of the Reformation 500 years ago. It was only the elite and the select few who had an opportunity to have access to education who really had words or could write and read. The majority of the world was illiterate, incapable of reading and writing and communicating other than with language to each other. And so the people at the time of the Reformation a long time ago were completely dependent upon their leaders, those in authority, for any information that they needed in life. And this was especially true when it came to the things of faith, when it came to the planting of the seed of God's word. It was the responsibility of the leaders of the church, the bishops and the priests, to communicate to the people the things of God so that as we so often talk about, Faith literally could come by hearing the message and the word of Christ Jesus. If those leaders did not plant the seed of God's word, they didn't speak what God said, then normal, average, everyday people would not have the opportunity for the seed of faith to be planted and to grow in their lives. And so there were some concerns in the time leading up to the Reformation. Concerns that I believe were raised by Jesus at the time that he stood on the beach and he told this parable of the sower seed. There were many at the time of the Reformation 500 years ago who were critical of the hypocrisy of the leadership, that they weren't communicating and sharing the seed of God's word to the people so that it could grow. It was like the seed that got cast along the path that the birds came up and ate. It didn't have a chance to take root and to grow at all. And this was all built upon that need for the instant gratification that was being presented by the leaders of the church who said if people used money to buy indulgences, those pieces of paper that said that their sins were forgiven, then, then they would have God's grace. The problem was, is that once the money ran out, you didn't have an opportunity to have God's grace and forgiveness anymore. Very much like the rocky path upon which the seed of God's word fell in the parable that Jesus told. That after that instant gratification, it was quickly scorched out by the sun, burned out by the sun. And all this came from the thorny ground of greed that the leaders of the church at that time had. They wanted earthly treasures so that they had the money needed to build St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. And so it was the desire for those things that became the thorny place that choked out the growth and the planting of God's word and the seed of faith. And so those reformers 500 years ago wanted to get the church back to the good soil so that it could receive and hear God's word and grow in ways that it produced fruit. Now as we live our lives today in this sophisticated technological world that we have, that we have words right there in our hand. Anything we want to know at any moment, moment, we can just look up on our smartphones. We are smart because of our smartphones. We don't have to worry about such struggles, such problems. So maybe we're asking ourselves, do the words of Jesus in the gospel?
gospel lesson today still apply to us? Can they say anything to us? Because after all, all of us who are here today, I'm sure think we are the good soil. We are here. So the seed of God's word can be planted in us and faith can grow. And yet just as those words that Jesus spoke along the beach were so relevant so long ago, and as they were relevant 500 years ago, I do believe they are relevant for us today as we hear this parable. I think this smartness that we have has worked against us. As we talked about a little bit last week, as we alluded to, we have become so wise and intelligent because we are so readily available to technology and information everywhere we look that the danger exists that we have become so arrogant and self-dependent that there's no room left for God to plant the seed of faith in us anymore. It's like the seed along the path and it gets devoured quickly by the birds. And we too now live in this culture where, yeah, we have all this technology that's led us to TV and social media and all these things. And now you can go, you can find churches on TV and social media. But there are certain ones that preach what we call this gospel of prosperity. That if you believe enough in God, everything you dream of and wish for and want in your life will come to you. It's that power of positive thinking. Until life doesn't go the way you plan. Until life doesn't exactly work out the way you want. This is the rocky ground. The seed grows up quickly with great joy, but then it's burned out by the sun, the heat of life not working out the way we want it to. And certainly now more than any other time in history, we are walking among the ground of thorns that is brought to us by wealth and riches. The prosperity that surrounds us is a constant struggle and deterrent to the planting of the seed of faith, the seed of God's word to take root in our lives and grow and produce those fruits. So yes, I believe the words of Jesus in the parable are relevant and powerful and important for us today, even though we're the most literate and informed people in the history of civilization. This coming week, Moon Dirt, from Neil Armstrong's first trip to the moon in 1969, is going up for auction. I don't know if you read this or not. And this little bag, it's like a sandwich bag, size of Moon Dirt, is expected to fetch two to four million dollars. And what's the owner of this moon dirt gonna get out of this? Is this gonna be the dirt that they can plant seeds in that are gonna bring forth plants that are outside of this world, the most incredible things in the universe? I think not. It's just gonna sit there on a shelf to be looked at. And this is what I bought, moon dirt, for two to four million dollars. We have access to dirt that is free that will take us to the moon and beyond, will bring us growth in ways that we can't possibly imagine. And the question for us today is, how do we remain as that good dirt, that good soil? How do we be those ones where God plants that seed of his word and faith grows in wonderful ways? One of my frustrations as a pastor in today's world is the fact that the seed of God's word is available in ways never dreamed of before, in ways that we've never seen before. There are churches everywhere of every different background and every different style offering all sorts of different schedules for us to attend. And yet church attendance is on the decline. And you don't even need to go to church anymore with all the technology that we have. You can carry the Bible around with you in your phone, and it doesn't even weigh anything. You can have devotions come to your phone every single day. We live in this world where we have now translation technology that allows anyone, any place in the world of any language, to hear the Word of God, to interpret the Word of God, and to receive it and to understand it. We have YouTube that even if you don't make it to church anymore, you can actually hear the word of God and have the seed planted by clicking on the email and watching 10 minutes of a sermon. And yet, I think 
we take the planting of the seed of God's word for granted. For all the access and freedom that we have, how much do we let it take root in us? How much does it grow? This is what Paul was talking about when he talked about the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And if we're going to be that good soil, we need to take heed to the words that Paul said to us in the, in the epistle lesson from Romans today. That we need to know that the Spirit of God dwells in us. That's what baptism is all about. And we need to be in the things of the Spirit. We are the good soil when we allow the Spirit of God to cultivate us and work in us. And when the Spirit of God works in us, we have exactly what Isaiah the prophet was talking about over 700 years before Jesus preached along the beach. Listen to what God said through Isaiah. My word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and it succeed in the thing for which I sent it. What can we do? What do we have to become that good soil? The fact of the matter is we don't really have to do much at all. We don't have to spend $4 million for moon dirt to do it. All we need to do is let God's Spirit work in us. And God's promise is that His Word, that seed planted in us, will accomplish its purpose. It will not return to God empty. It will achieve the goal. And the goal is to transform lives and transform the world. So whether we hear God's word here and have the seed planted here or in some other faith community, whether we hear the word of God or eat the word of God or receive it in our, ha our heart, whether we're here or, or receiving it by social media, God's promise is his word will accomplish his purpose and not return to him empty. So our calling is to let God make us the good soul. Let God, through the gifts of the church, plant that seed. And when God does, wherever we may be, we will be transformed and we will have the power to change the world. Amen.